we're going to continue reading from the book called Out of My Mind, starting with chapter 6. Mrs. Violet Valencia lives next door to us. Violets are purple, and Valencia oranges are, well, orange. Purple oranges are just plain unusual. So is she. She's a big woman, about six feet tall, with the biggest hands I have ever seen. They're huge. I bet she could put a full-size basketball in each of her palms and still have room left over. If Mrs. V is, well, like a tree, then my mom is a twig next to her. I was about two years old when I first started hanging out at Mrs. V's house. Mom and Dad hardly left me with anybody at first, but sometimes their work schedules overlapped and they needed a third person to help out. Mom said Mrs. V was the very first visitor when I came home from the hospital. The first person to just pick me up like any other baby. A lot of my parents' friends had been scared to even touch me, but not Mrs. V. Mrs. V wears huge flowing dresses. Must be miles of material on those things. All in crazy color combinations. Bubblegum pink with fire engine red, with peachy sherbet, with bright cinnamon. And all shades of orange and purple, of course. She told, she, she told me she makes the dresses herself. I guess she'd have to. I have never seen any like them, anything like them in any store in the mall. Or in a hospital either. Hmm. Mrs. V and Mom used to work together as nurses at the hospital. Mom told me the children there had been crazy about her. She wore the same bright outfits in the preemie ward, the kids' cancer ward, the children's burn unit. Color brings life and hope to these children, she announced boldly, daring anybody to disagree. I guess nobody did. I remember sitting on Mrs. V's porch that very first time. Mom and Dad looked concerned, but Mrs. V held me tightly and bounced me on her knees. She must have had a hidden microphone under those flowing clothes. She has one of those voices that can make anybody shut up, turn, and listen. Of course I'll watch Melody, she said with certainty. Well... Melody is, well, you know, really special, Dad said hesitantly. All kids are special, Mrs. V had replied with authority. But this one has hidden superpowers. I'd love to help her find them. We can't possibly pay you what this is worth to us, Dad began. Mrs. V had shrugged and said with a smile, I'll appreciate whatever you can give me. My dad looked sheepish. Well, thanks. And I'll get that ramp finished this weekend. I just need to make one more trip to the lumber yard. Now, that will be a big help, Mrs. V had said with a nod. Melody can be a handful, Mom warned. Mrs. V lifted me into the air. I've got big hands. We want her to reach her highest potential, Dad added. Oh, gag me, Mrs. V said, startling him. Don't get bogged down in all those touchy-feely words and phrases you read in books on disabled kids. Melody is a child who can learn and will learn. She sticks with me. Dad looked embarrassed, but then he grinned. Bring her back in 20 years, he said. You'll have her home by supper time. So most work days, I'd end up at Mrs. Valencia's place for a couple of hours until mom or dad could get home. When I got older, I went over to Mrs. V's every afternoon after school. 
I don't know how much they paid her, but it could not have been enough. From the very beginning, Mrs. Valencia gave me no sympathy. Instead of sitting me in the special little chair my parents had bought for me, she plopped me on my back in the middle of the floor on a large, soft quilt. The first time she did that, I looked up at her like she was crazy. I cried. I screeched. She ignored me, walked away, and flipped on her CD player. Loud marching band music blared through the room. I liked it. Then she came back and put my favorite toy, a rubber monkey, a few inches from my head. I wanted that monkey. It squeaked when you touched it, but it may as well have been a million miles away. I was on my back, stuck like a turtle. I screamed louder. Mrs. V sat down on the quilt. Turn over, Melody. She said quietly. Sometimes she can make her voice really soft. Maybe she said it like this, like, turn over, Melody. Maybe that's the way she said it. I was so shocked, I stopped yelling. I couldn't turn over. Didn't she know that? Was she nuts? She wiped my nose with a tissue. You can turn yourself over, Melody. I know you understand every word I say to you, and I know you can do this. Now, roll. Actually, I never bothered to try very hard to roll anywhere. I'd fallen off the sofa a couple times and it hurt, so I usually just waited for mom or dad to move me to a comfortable position. Look at how you're lying. You're already on your side, halfway there. Use all that screaming and hollering energy you've got to take you to another position. Toss your right arm over and concentrate. So I did. I strained, I reached. I tried so hard, I farted. Mrs. V cracked up. But slowly, slowly, I felt my body rolling to the right. And then, un unbelievably, plop, I was on my stomach. I was so proud of myself, I screeched. I told you so said Mrs. V, victory in her voice. Now, go get that monkey. I knew better than to protest, so I reached for it. The monkey was now only two inches from my hand. I tried to scoot. My legs kept doing the opposite of what my head wanted them to do. I wiggled. I grabbed a fistful of the quilt and pulled. The monkey got closer. You're a smart little cookie, Mrs. V told me. I gave the quilt another tug and finally, gradually, I had the monkey in my hand. I clutched it and it squeaked as if it were glad to see me. I grinned and made it squeak again and again. After that workout, you must be hungry, she said. She fed me a vanilla milkshake first then my vegetables and noodles. Mrs. Valencia always serves dessert first. And I always eat all my food, the healthy part and the yummy part too. It's our secret. Mrs. B is the only person who lets me drink soda, Coke, Sprite, Tahitian treat. I love those nose tickling burp. Mom and dad mostly give me milk and juice. Mellow Yellow is my favorite. Mrs. V even started calling me that. At Mrs. V's house, I learned to scoot and then to crawl. I'd never win a baby crawling contest, but by the time I was three, I had learned how to get across the room. She made me figure out how to flip myself over from back to front and front to back again. She was tough on me. She let me fall out of my wheelchair onto pillows so I could learn how best to catch myself. 
Suppose somebody forgets to fasten that seatbelt of yours, hmm? She said in that voice that sounded like she was chewing gravel. You better know what to do or you'll bust your head wide open. I didn't want a busted head. So we practiced. She'd send me back home, tell me, tell mom I had a good dinner and a good poop. I have no idea why parents think that's so important. Then wink at me. I was like her secret mission. Once I started school, however, I discovered I had a much bigger problem than just falling out of my chair. I needed words. How was I supposed to learn anything if I couldn't talk? How was I supposed to answer questions or ask questions? I knew a lot of words, but I couldn't re read a book. I had a million thoughts in my head, but I couldn't share them with anybody. On top of that, people didn't really expect the kids in age five to learn much anyway. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't have been much more than six when Mrs. V figured out what I needed. One afternoon after school, after a snack of ice cream with caramel sauce, she flipped through the cable channels and stopped at a documentary about some guy named Stephen Hawking. I know him. I know who he is. He's really smart. Now, I'm interested in almost anything that has a wheelchair in it. Duh. I even like the Jerry Lewis telethon. Turns out Stephen Hawking has something called ALS and he can't walk or talk. And he's probably the smartest man in the world and everybody knows it. So cool. I bet he gets really frustrated sometimes. After the show went off, I got real quiet. He's like you sort of. Isn't he? Mrs. V asked. I pointed to yes on my board, then pointed to no. I don't follow you. She scratched her head. I pointed to need on my board, then to read, need, read, need, read. I know you can read lots of words, Melody, Mrs. V said. I pointed again, more. I could feel tears coming. More, more, more. Melody, if you had to choose, which would you rather be able to do? Walk or talk? Talk, I pointed to on my board. I hit the word again and again. Talk, talk, talk. I have so much to say. So Mrs. V made it her new mission to give me language. She ripped all the words off my communication board and started from scratch. She made the new word smaller so more could fit. Every single space on my talking board got filled with names and pictures of people in my life questions I might need to ask, and a big variety of nouns and verbs and adjectives so I could actually compose something that looked like a sentence. I could ask, where is my book bag? Or say, happy birthday, mom, just by pointing with my thumb. I have magic thumbs, by the way. They work perfectly. The rest of my body is sort of like a coat with the buttons done up in the wrong holes but my thumbs came out with no flaws, no glitches. Just my thumbs, go figure. Every time Mrs. V would add new words, I learned them quickly. I used them in sentences and was hungry for more. I wanted to read. So she made flashcards, pink for nouns, blue for verbs, green for adjectives, piles and piles of words I learned to read. Little words like fish and dish and swish. I liked rhyming words. They're easy to remember. It's like buy one, get the rest free, sale at the mall. I learned big words like caterpillar and mosquito and words that follow crazy rules like knock and gnome. 
I learned all the days of the week, months of the year, all the planets, oceans, and continents. Every single day, I learned new words. I sucked them in and I gobbled them all up like they were Mrs. V's cherry cake. And then she would stretch out the cards on the floor, position me on a big pillow so I could reach them, and I'd push the cards into sentences with my fists. It was like stringing the beads of a necklace together to make something really cool. I like to make her laugh, so I put the words into wacky order sometimes. The blue fish will run away. He does not want to be dinner. She also taught me words for all the music I heard at home. I learned to tell the difference between Beethoven and Bach, very famous composers, between a sonata and a concerto. Those are two different kinds of um, music pieces that both of those composers composed. She'd pick a selection on a CD, then ask me the composer. Mozart. I'd point to the correct card from the choices she'd set in front of me. Then I'd point to the color blue on my board. Huh? Then she played a selection from Bach. I'd point to the correct composer just by hearing his music. Then once again, touched the color blue on my board. I also touched purple. She looks confused. I searched around for the right words to explain what I meant. I wanted her to understand that music was colorful when I heard it. I finally realized that even Mrs. V couldn't figure out everything in my head. We kept going. Sometimes she played hip hop music, sometimes oldies. Music and the colors it produced flowed around her as easily as her clothing. Mrs. V took me outside in all kinds of weather. One day, she actually let me sit outside in the rain. It was steaming hot, and I was sticky and irritable. It must have been about 90 degrees outside. We were sitting on her porch watching the storm clouds gather. She told me the names of all the clouds and made up stories about them. I knew that later she'd have the names of every kind of cloud on word cards for me. Big old Nimbus up there, he's black and powerful and can blow all the other clouds out of the sky. He wants to marry Miss Cumulus Cloud, but she's too soft and pretty to be bothered with such a scary guy. So he gets mad and makes storms, she told me. Finally, old Nimbus got his way and the rain came down around me and Mrs. V. It rained so hard, I couldn't see past the porch. The wind blew and the wet coolness of all the rain washed over us. It felt so good. A small leak on Mrs. V's porch let a few drops of rain fall on my head. <laughs> I laughed out loud. Mrs. V gave me a funny look, then hopped up. You want to feel it all? She asked. I nodded my head. Yes, yes, yes. She rolled me down the ramp Dad had built, both of us getting wetter every second. She stopped when we got to the grass, and we let the rain drench us. My hair, my clothes, my eyes and my arms and hands. Wet, wet, wet. It was awesome. The rain was warm, almost like bath water. I laughed and laughed. Eventually, Mrs. V rolled me back up the ramp and into the house, where she dried me off, changed my clothes, and gave me a cup of chocolate milk. She dried off my hair, and by the time Dad came to pick me up, the rain had stopped and everything was dry once more. I, dream of, I dreamed of chocolate clouds all night.